Rose University. Let's start our day with the pride of New Jersey, the marching Scarlet Knights. Biggest adversity. I learned what those words truly mean. Knights represent a code of conduct, strength, loyalty, courage, and confidence. Today, our new campaign begins. Although my number is retired, the duty and code of a Scarlet Knight still burns within me. Are you? Ready. We start our day where college football had its start. Rutgers University as we welcome Rutgers for the first time to the Big Ten Network. BTN presents Big Ten Football presented by the United States Marine Corps. And today, the Rutgers Scarlet Knights open up the home portion of their schedule against the Howard Bison. Kyle Flood and the Knights getting ready to make their home debut in the 2014 season. Start of a gigantic year for Rutgers as they enter Big Ten play. Good afternoon, everybody. I'm Kevin Kugler, and we welcome you for the first time on the Big Ten Network to Rutgers. My partner needs no introduction. You you know him as former Rutgers and NFL center Sean O'Hara and it is a big year for Rutgers Sean what's it mean to be part of the Big Ten for Rutgers Kevin this is huge and, and for Rutgers to now be big time college football they're so excited there's energy on the campus energy with the program I know from my time here on the banks of the old Raritan I, I thrived and I, I, I wish that I had a chance to play some of these big time college games that they're going to be playing this season. Well, a great start to the 2014 season for Rutgers. They went west and knocked off a high scoring Washington State team. Yeah, a huge test for them to open up the season, but a great victory for Rutgers, avenging a, a loss last season in week one to Fresno State on the West Coast. Certainly a better flight home for Kyle Flood and the Scarlet Knights, but I thought they started out great, started out fast, and against as you mentioned, a very high-powered Washington State team. A great victory for the Scarlet Knights. Great way to start your season. Well, let's look ahead to today, where they take on Howard in the home opener and our CC's Pizza keys to the game. Sean? Well, it has to start with Gary Nova, the quarterback. And, you know, he was benched last season. I thought he started out very confident. Last week, obviously, the first play of the game helps. A big throw to Carew. But I want to see him consistent and take care of the football. Get the ball into the hands of the playmakers. Don't feel like you have to do everything. For defense, the secondary, they want to bounce back from a school record 532 yards in the air last week against Washington State. And really, a lot of it came, they gave up five big plays in the, in the passing game, 25 yards or more. That's what they want to really work on today against Howard. The third member of our crew is Tina Servacio, standing by with the head coach of Rutgers, Kyle Flood. All right, Kevin, thank you. Coach Flood, this is Rutgers' first home game as a member of the Big Ten Conference. What kind of significance does it carry for you and your players today? It's a, it's a historic day for us and our program. And as I've said to the team on a couple of occasions this offseason, first impressions count, so we want to make a good one. And you're coming off a big win against Washington State last week. What did you like, but what do you also want to see improve here today against Howard? I love the competitiveness of this team, and I think 
like a lot of coaches around the country, I want to see our team get fundamentally better from week one to week two. We got a great opportunity today and a beautiful day out here at Piscataway. All right, Coach Flood, thank you and good luck. Thank you. All right, Kevin, back to you. All right, Tina, thank you very much. As we get set for this one, Rutgers will receive in our auto owners insurance impact players, Sean. Well, yes, the uh, the offense is going to go through Paul James. I, I thought he got stronger as the game went on last week. Looked it for him to get a heavy dose of carries. And then Leonte Carew, I mean, he started off the game with that huge play. I think Gary Nova is going to try to find him early on. But he likes to come down and get involved in their blitz packages as well. It is a warm day in Piscataway, 88 degrees and just about that humid. The 60. humidity. Yeah, and that's what's getting us. It's not the heat, it's the humidity. 65% yeah. humidity. There is a chance of showers. However, for right now, we've cleared off. We've got bright sunshine, warm temperatures. The big man next to me is uh, noticing the heat already. But yeah, I'm feeling it. But you're doing, but you're doing just fine. Time to hydrate. If you're looking for your school's game, go to btncom gamefinder right now to see where you can find the game in your area. As mentioned, Rutgers will start off with the football. Janarian Grant is the deep man. Also pretty, back is excuse me, Sean, also back is Josh sure. Hicks. Yeah. Oh yeah. Josh Hicks. The uh, this is his debut. Pretty sure that. Uh, but Janarian's going to take this one out. He doesn't, he doesn't like touchbacks. We are ready to get this one started. The home opener for the 2014 season for Rutgers. And a good kickoff by Fleck through the end zone for the touchback and that'll bring this man out onto the field for the first time Gary Nova we know what happened at the end of 2013 back in the starting lineup team captain again this year 29 career starts and Ralph Friedgen told us yesterday that he really likes the way that he keeps his composure and after going through what he did last year he learned an awful lot about playing that position and going through some adversity certainly a test for Gary you know getting benched and I think the fact that he came back and was still Announced as a captain, obviously huge, his, for, given what his teammates think of him. And I think for him, he looks so poised, and Ralph could say that because he's really simplified this offense for him. Paul James is the single setback. Nova to throw on first down to the sideline, and a sliding catch is made by John Simmis at the 32-yard line. Simmis had three catches last week as part of that retooled wide receiver core. A little different start than last week, but, you know, I like to move the pocket throw and, and you know what, let Gary Nova get a little easy throw in his belt. I'm sure he's excited uh, being the, the first home game of the season. Second down at three. First carry for James and a good play in the backfield by Julian David. They weren't sure if David were going to be able to play today. Not only is he able to play, but he makes an immediate impact. Yeah, great play coming up there, setting the edge. And you see he's wearing a new brace. And that's what he hurt in training camp. And they didn't have him last week, as you mentioned, but a great play right there coming up to stop the run. A pectoral injury sidelined him as we look at that knee brace on Julian David. They need him. Coach says he's their best player on defense. Made a good play there to make it third and four. Nova with time. Throwing into double coverage, and the pass is incomplete. Trying to get it to Leonte Carew. He was well covered, and Rutgers will have to punt it away. Yeah, it looked like Howard brought a little pressure there. Uh, saw a couple linebackers coming, and, you know, not a bad throw away there. Double coverage, not exactly a high percentage throw there. Joey Roth on to punt. Averaged 36 yards per punt last week. Tavius Brown back deep. And Brown from the 23. Trying to find some running room. And the freshman finds a crease. Tavius Brown caught at the 44-yard line. Terrific return by Tavius Brown. David Maluski on the tackle. And good field position for Howard. Wow, what a great return there by Tavius. And you know, you, as a returner, you always your job is to make one guy miss. And he does that, and then <laughs> they did a great job of setting up the, the wall on the sideline there. A 46-yard punt, a 37-yard return. Last week in their loss at Akron, 41-0. Their best starting field position, their own 35-yard line. 
Hart starts at the Rutgers 41 on the first possession of the ball game. Claudius Freeman with the delayed handoff and Freeman inside the 40 to the 38 before David Malewski can make the stop. It's a great start for Howard. This is exactly what you wanted with your coach Harold. Make a big play and, and to be able to start on your 41. That's a good start. Second down and seven at the 38. Quarterback Greg McGee to the air for the first time and a left hander across and finds Matt Colvin down to the 32 yard line a pickup of six Anthony Chaffee on the tackle for Rutgers and there's a good look at Greg McGee last week a career low in passing yardage against Acker but this is a very talented dual threat quarterback yeah he's very talented has a very good arm very athletic you know this the MEAC's preseason player of the year in their conference and I think for him it's just don't try to do too much Third down and a yard. Freeman is the single setback behind Greg McGee. Colvin the motion man on third down. Freeman pushing his way forward near the first down at the 31 yard line. Went on the retooled left side of the line. They've had to shuffle around that line as Dewani Mara makes the tackle, but a first down. Yeah, the injury uh, last week to John Smith, the left tackle, and Tory Boyd had to move over and play left tackle last week. Now he's back to his right tackle position. Uh, Deontay Allen Wright has moved out from left guard to play left tackle. Big first down pickup there for Howard. At the 31-yard line, first down and 10. Motion from Tavius Brown, whose punt return set him up in good field position. Delayed handoff. Maluski in the backfield and penetration killing the running play a loss of two. Yeah, it looked like a little sprint, sprint draw action. And Maluski with the great pressure, you know, I think when you're playing, we're Howard, and you're playing a, a defense like Rutgers. Now they want you want to let them get up the field, run some draws to try to slow them down a little bit. That's what Ted White's trying to do. Second and 12 of 33. Under pressure, got rid of it. Catch is made by Colvin. He's got a first down and more to the 15. 18-yard pickup from Matt Colvin. Garif Glashin on the tackle, but another first down for Howard. And there's an injured player back at the 35-yard line. You can see Rutgers brings pressure off the weak side here. A great pickup by the running back there. You know, he delivers a strike. McGee gets the ball out of his hand. You see a missed tackle there by Rutgers. And uh, yeah, here we see from another angle, there's the blitz pickup right there by the running back. McGee still takes a shot. That's a big-time throw right there. McGee is okay. The injured player was Deonta Allen Wright. Oh, so Janair Ray, Reyes comes in now, and Wright was the guy who just moved back. Yeah, we just talked about they lost their starting left tackle last week. Now their backup goes down. That's the longest play from scrimmage this year for Howard, 18 yards. And it sets him up at first and 10 at the Rutgers 15. They were only in the red zone one time all of last week. Play clock winding down to two. McGee with time. And the pass incomplete. Matt Colvin may have heard some footsteps from Garif Glashin as he was closing quickly. Pass was a little bit high. It's interesting, though, because before the game, we were talking about the fact that Rutgers has not given up a score to a team in the FCS since, I think, 2009. The last, and the last thing to do it was Howard. And here they are knocking on the door again. Second down and 10 at the 15-yard line. The tight ends, Cheney and Williams, shifting. And now motion coming across for Stuart Hartman. And a motion going to be called against Howard. False start, number 87 offense. Five-yard penalty, remains second down. Sean mentioned the dominance of Rutgers in the previous openers and the shutouts that have been pitched in home openers over the last several years by the Scarlet Knights. And you see those last four home openers. Opponents. Couple donuts. Yeah. Opponents haven't had to worry about the end zone. Wow. Kickers have had a day off as far as extra points. In the dead zone. Second and 15, and now. A whistle and a timeout. 
So the timeout is called. 10.44 to go in the first quarter. Rutgers will talk it over. Scoreless with Howard. Football on BTN is presented by the United States Marine Corps. The few, the proud, the Marines. And brought to you by Go RVing. Find the RV that's right for your tailgate at GoRVing.com. Oh, a great way to start your day. A little tailgating action at Rutgers. They were out early this morning to get the party started. Next week, when Penn State's in town taking on Kyle Flood's squad, that party will be going on all day and into the night. Coach Flood, 7-0 career record in September games. Continued that with the big win against Washington State last week. Underway here against Howard as the Bison work their way to the Rutgers 20, but a second and 15 after the penalty for Greg McGee and Howard. Marvin Harris, the tight end in motion on second down, delayed handoff, Freeman with room and a blocker. Freeman to the 10, Freeman to the five, and he's into the end zone for the touchdown. Wow, what a great start for Howard. To march down the field like that. You know, it looked like a, it was just a little misdirection play. You could see the, the quarterback just rolled out to the left. There was absolutely nobody on the other side of the field for Rutgers. Aquanius Freeman, who did not score a touchdown last year, gets into the end zone on the opening drive here at High Point Solutions Stadium. John Fleck on for the extra point. 24 for 31 a year ago. Give Tavius Brown credit with that good punt return. It gave Howard the short field to work with. And the kick is good for John Fleck as Aquanius Freeman, the junior from New Orleans, Louisiana, finds some running room on a little misdirection and coasts into the end zone for Howard's first touchdown of the 2014 season. It's easy to buy. Nova to the right side, almost intercepted by Tamlin Antoine. Almost picked it off as he jumped right in front of Janarian Grant, and it's fourth down. You know, Gary Nova has to know better than this. I mean, I just got done saying you have to be careful here. Don't force anything. And he's very lucky that wasn't intercepted. You know, go ahead with the check down if it's not there. Get a couple yards, settle for the field goal. Rutgers is fortunate in kicking the field goal right here. 42 yard try for Kyle Federico. Two for two last week against Washington State, and Federico bangs it home. So Rutgers does get points on the board as Federico's third field goal of the season cuts the Howard lead down to four. Howard 7, Rutgers 3. It's a little steamy in our booth. Tina Servacio is on the field. Are you noticing the heat at all down there? Oh, sure. I'm just nice and cool down here. Well, I can tell <laughs> you for sure, Kevin and Sean, it is stifling. So now if you check your phones, it'll tell you that it's 90 degrees right now in Piscataway. But according to Rutgers staff and also some Weather Channel experts, it is 96 degrees at the waist on the field and at field level 105 degrees where these players are playing the game of football in all of their pads. And Sean, you mentioned this, the turf. That's what it does. The sun beating down on this turf with this almost 80% humidity just cooks the temperatures higher even more, Kevin. Oh, it is. It is an ugly kind of day from a temperature and humidity standpoint, and those guys in the trenches especially are going to be feeling that. Yeah, well, and they're wearing the dark jerseys. <laughs> you always want to wear whites on a hot, sunny day. Second and four after the six-yard run by James. Nova to the air. Good catch. And near the first down. And there's Tyler Croft getting his first catch of the 2014 season. Hey, good for him. I know they were eager to get him involved in the offense. And as you mentioned earlier, Kevin, he, he got a lot more attention last week. But, you know, just a quick five there by, by Gary Nova. And, you know, for a tight end, it's it's almost like a slot receiver. You just kind of find a little hole in the zone defense there and get open. Gary Nova found it. First down and 10, 26-yard line. Howard leading Rutgers 
James. Didn't see much room to run on that first down carry, second and ten. A lot of penetration coming from the Howard defensive line. I, has, I have to believe that it's coming from the slanting, the movement. You know, when you know that you're an undersized D lineman, you're giving up some height and some weight, you want to move around, and, and that's what this front for Howard is doing. Second down and 10 at the 26. Draw play. Looking for room is James, and James to the 31 before he's driven back as we head to Dave Repson in Chicago with a T-Mobile studio update. Uh, Kevin, last week Jordan Westerkamp had the great behind the back catch. This one a little more conventional. 40 yards from Tommy Armstrong. Amir Abdullah has just added a touchdown. Huskers on top of McNeese. 14 7. All right, Dave, thank you very much. That Nebraska offense, especially potent last week, over 750 yards in their win against Florida Atlantic. Third down and five at the 31 yard line. Nova will set it up for James down the sideline. James with room to run. James off to the races. Nobody's going to catch Paul James. It's a touchdown, and Rutgers takes the lead. Great play call by Ralph Regan. What an explosive player Paul James is. They caught him on the blitz, Kevin. Howard had a blitz coming up, and... and when you call a screenplay, you hope that you get some sort of pressure package because if you can get one guy blocked, make one guy miss, it's a big play. 64 yards for Kyle Flood's star running back as James able to put it in for six and now Rutgers muddle huddle with Kyle Federico on for the extra point. The kick by Federico is good. 40 seconds remaining in the first quarter. And Rutgers into the end zone for the first time today. Nova to James. 64 yards. The pass was the shortest part. Then Paul James did the rest of the work with great speed down the sideline to give the Knights the 10 7 lead late first quarter here at Rutgers. Avenue as we head to the second quarter Rutgers and Howard 10-7 the lead for Rutgers after one quarter Kevin Kugler Sean O'Hara Tina Servacio wonderful to have you with us from sunny and warm Piscataway second and 16 for Greg McGee and Howard with time McGee over the middle and it's incomplete threw it too tall for Tavius Brown and in the area Jonathan Aiken was lurking and had a shot at an interception yeah, this throw, you'll see, uh, you know, he had him open. He just let the ball sail on him a little bit. You can see, I mean, he goes through his hands a little bit. That's a tough catch right there. As you mentioned, Jonathan Aiken, he was looking for a big hit. Third down and 16 at the 19-yard line. Little option play, McGee to the 30 but well short of the first down 11 yard gain Kevin Snyder got him around the ankles to trip him up and the punt team will come on for the Bison nice change up there offensively the whole option you know the option play is it's so tough to defend because unless you practice the rules defensively hey who has the quarterback who has the pitch it's something that if an offense runs it once you have you have to spend a lot of time preparing for it. Rutgers will get the chance in a couple of weeks to defend that option against one of the best in college football and running at Navy in a couple of weeks yeah that's a true true test that's a <laughs> triple option all day long oh high snap good catch by Fleck and he just got rid of it and a pretty good punt Grant driven back to the 23 yard line wow. where he calls the fair catch degree of difficulty quite high for John Fleck but an excellent job to get that one off and get the yeah. distance he did nice Ray guy impersonation there <laughs> 
Check this out. A great catch. He might have to play receiver, too, with hands like that. And as you mentioned, gets a great kickoff as well. Under place kicker. Hunters are people, too. Okay. I've heard that rumor. Yes. He's doing fine things for the punters are people movement. 47-yard punt under duress for John Fleck. From the 23 first down, Nova on the roll to the sideline, breaking tackles and getting the first down is Andrew Terzilli, one of the new wide receivers for Rutgers, transferred in from Kansas this season and his first career catch in a Rutgers uniform. Similar to the first play of the game, he just a, a quick little sprint out to the right. Gary Nova delivers a strike, and there you can see the physical and bigger wide receivers of Rutgers trying to take advantage of the smaller corners. At the 37, first down. <laughs> Running room to the outside for Peoples. And Peoples across midfield into Howard territory at the 49. Kenneth Russ on the tackle. 14-yard pickup for Desmond Peoples. But Desmond Peoples, he gets to the edge so fast. And here you see some great blocking up front. But look at Leonte Carew downfield blocking right there. Wide receivers are just as big of a part of the run game as offensive line. We always said, hey, we'll, get, we'll take credit for the first four or five yards, but any run after that, a 15-yard run, give credit to the receivers. Peoples on first down. A hole on the right side, closing quickly at the 45 after a four-yard gain. Kyrie Brown on the tackle for Howard. Back to the ground again goes Rutgers. It was very effective on their possession two drives ago. Of course, the touchdown on the last one coming on the 64-yard pass from Nova to James. Yeah, they have two pass plays over 60 yards now on the season in just two games. Second and six at the 45. Sets up the screen, juggled and caught. Nice play by Grant, who takes it just shy of the 40-yard line. A good yard for the first down to go. Yeah, twins left formation right here, a little bubble screen. Gary Nova kind of led him a little too much. But there we see the great hands by Janarian Grant. We talked about him as a kick returner and a punt returner. He has a touchdown doing each from last season. But they want to get Grant out in open space. They want him to make that defender miss and, and let him show his explosiveness. Those four catches last week, a career high, had three all of last year. Kicking forward on third and two is Peoples who gets the first down. Devin Rollins on the tackle. Weeknights, join the conversation on BTN Live. It's the most comprehensive nightly college football discussion from the guys who love to talk about the game. BTN Live, weeknights at 6 Eastern on BTN. This week on BTN Live, I would imagine there'll be a little bit of discussion about a game here next week. Yeah, apparently it's a big one. Nova over to the right side. The catch is made. Great rhythm right there by Gary Nova. Just a slam. And boy, Carew caught it in stride. I mean, he, he didn't even budge, just kept running. We've seen an effective ground game and a big play passing game so far in this first half for Rutgers. Kyle Federico on for the extra point. Federico makes it 17-7, Scarlet Knights. So after Howard jumped out to the early 7-0 lead, Gary Nova and the Rutgers offense has found its spark. 17 unanswered. This touchdown by Carew, the latest, and a 17-7 Rutgers lead. Gary Nova, yeah, he's fired up. Rutgers Kirkpatrick Chapel sits on a hill that was the site of a key turning point in the Revolutionary War. The chapel was designed by Henry Janeway Hardenberg, who was also the architect of two New York landmarks, the Plaza Hotel and the Dakota Building. The chapel's stained glass charter window depicts the 1766 signing of the college charter by the royal governor of New Jersey, William Franklin, son of Benjamin Franklin. 
So much history here in the birthplace of college football. The Scarlet Knights making some history this year in their first year in the Big Ten Conference. Conference opener next week on BTN as Penn State comes calling. Hey, Sean, I'm already excited about that one. That is going to be a wild atmosphere. The place has been sold out for what seems like forever. And they are ready to get that one going. First, though, they've got to continue to tussle with Howard, a 17-7 lead for Rutgers here early second quarter. Swing pass, Freeman. And Freeman, the ball popping out at the end of the play. Loose on the field, Rutgers saying they've got it, and they do. The turnover recovered by Nadir Barnwell as Freeman had it fall out of his hands, and Rutgers gets it in Howard territory. This would be a huge break for Rutgers. Let's see if we can see who knocked it out there. You know, it looks like a it looks like a ball kind of comes out as he hits the ground, and you could see the run. You could see Freeman pointing to the ground, saying that I was down. But the ball did squirt out, and Barnwell came up with it. So if I'm Rutgers, I'm hurrying to run the play. Did it come out as he ran into his old lineman who went down to block? Either way, Rutgers with the football on first down. Nova to the air. Nova to his fullback, Burton. Breaks a tackle and is down to the 10-yard line. Michael Burton, one of the five captains on this Rutgers squad, tripped up by Julian David after the pickup of 16. Well, Michael Burton, I mean, this is a fake toss, and you see they sneak the fullback out right there past the linebackers. And it's funny to hear Gary Nova, he talked about the fullback, and he said he might have some of the best hands on this team. So they like to use him an awful lot in the passing. First down and goal just inside the 10-yard line. James. And James down near the seventh. We saw Michael Burton do a Brian Leonard impersonation. Yeah, I was last just going to say, he, with he, that the old Leonard leap. Catch, the old Leonard leap, 34 yeah. yards, leaping a defender. He was asked about it afterwards, and he said, you know, I, I do watch a lot of Brian Leonard tape yeah. to learn more about the position. Yeah, Burton's a, oh, a great story. A former walk-on, Kyle Flood said that this week he'd love to have 100 of those guys. James up the middle. James into the end zone. First rushing touchdown of the day for Paul James, who also had a touchdown on the 64-yard reception earlier. Something just feels better when you punch the ball in, running the football. It looked like the right guard there had a great block pulling around on a simple power play. Federico with the extra point, and it is good to make it 24-7. There's a flag down at the 10-yard line after the extra point. And a personal foul looks like the ruling against Howard. We'll get the official word. Just running into the kicker. That is declined. The extra point is good. 24-7 Rutgers with the lead. And that possession, it was all about the backfield. First, the fullback, Michael Burton, with the big pass play that gets him into scoring position. Paul James finishing it off, 24-7 Rutgers. <laughs> Rutgers forcing Howard go, to go backwards, and then a block field goal. Kimoko Ture gets credit for the block. Yeah, Kimoko gets hands up. You see the low snap there. Freshman Austin Orr got it down low, and you know, there, there's the stats right there. Rutgers, nobody has blocked more kicks than them since 2009. 36 kicks, that's a lot. So that's a point of emphasis. They practice that each and every week. First down after the turnover, and James going back to work. Paul James out to the 33-yard line. Gresham Chisholm on the stop for Howard. You know, for Rutgers, you go from almost giving up a touchdown to then, to then blocking the field goal. That's a huge 
momentum swing right there for Rutgers. And if you're Howard, you have to be saying, oh, boy, you know, we're so close. You know, we had a chance to narrow the gap, and we, we got to just make the plays that are there for us to make. And a look back on that dropped touchdown pass. And end up with no points as Nova to the air. Wide open is Terzilli. Terzilli tripped up across the 35-yard line. They'll mark him down at the Howard 31. But Terzilli with a giant gain and a first down for Rutgers. 36 yards from Nova to Terzilli. There was nobody around him. He, he had to wait for the ball, but great play action fake right there. And Gary Nova, that's an easy throw for him. And you can see Terzilli, uh, he kind of trips up a little bit. Complete bust of coverage, Kevin. I mean, there's nobody within five yards of him when he catches that ball. On first down, Nova. The swing pass to the sideline, and James, great move on the sideline. James scooting inside the 10, and he'll take it in for the touchdown. Outstanding run after catch as Paul James made Eric Pittman and Kareem Brown both grasping at air as he ran by 30 unanswered for the Scarlet Knights. Paul James is so dangerous in the open field. I mean, missed tackle after missed tackle. And we talked about his power earlier on before the game, running through long tackles, he certainly did that. Federico on for the extra point. And 31-7 Rutgers, a flag is down after the extra point. This will go against Howard, and it will be declined once again. Offsides, defense number 99. Penalties declined. X points good. 31 unanswered for Rutgers, and not a surprise that Paul James was in the middle of it. This one again through the air, and what a touchdown. Yeah, Paul James right here with this tackle, and then Carew with the downfield block assist right there. Another missed tackle right there. Paul James, I mean, he's so shifty with such a big back. There's a little reaction. Oh, yeah. That constitutes enthusiastic reaction from Gary Nova. 31-7 <laughs> Rutgers, and is it time, Sean O'Hara, to start looking ahead? Fans have been doing it for months. Yeah. Will the team start to peak ahead now next week? Penn State primetime, BTN, then at Navy. Home for Tulane. Michigan back here at home on BTN. Then a bye before, and what a stretch. Ohio State, Nebraska, Wisconsin. And then you close with Indiana, and then at Michigan State, and at Maryland. Ooh. Tough little stretch there. Those back-to-back -back away games. Welcome to the Big Ten, Kyle Flood. And answer your question, no. You have to take it one week at a time. Brown, as it slipped through his hands, and the muff out of the back of the end zone. Coming up next, our Buffalo Wild Wings halftime report. Whole crew back in the studio with a lot to talk about today, and I'm sure they'll peek ahead to tonight, Michigan State and Oregon in a huge clash. Maybe they'll peek ahead to next yeah, week. Yeah, they'll peek ahead. Rutgers yeah. and Penn State. Game. Talk about it. it and you don't want to. If you're Rutgers, you don't want to start off next week like they did today with that slow start because you know, Penn State with, with their quarterback, they'll be down 20, 20 to nothing in a heartbeat. First down and ten for McGee and Howard at the 25-yard line. Draw play, Parker. And Parker grabbed by Darius Hamilton and driven back after he picks up three. What's the goal now, other than, of course, winning the game for Rutgers? You've got a 31-7 lead. What are you looking for if you're Kyle Flood? Consistency, clean play, what kinds of things do you want to see? Well, definitely consistency and, and you know, the, the clean play. I mean, we saw a bus of covers before, so there's certainly things that Kyle Flood can be telling them, look, we're not there yet. We still have a lot of room for improvement. The techniques are what they really want to watch. 
and really focus on. Parker breaks a tackle, and Parker with a tough run for the first down, out to the 40-yard line, 12-yard gain, Steve Longa on the tackle. Nice run by William Parker. Yeah, nice run, and, and right on cue, you say, what can they clean up? Well, the tackle, and you know, here you see one, two, three, three, four missed tackles in one run. That's something that they could certainly work on. McGee over the middle, catch is made, Mercer down to the 41-yard line, 42-yard line of Rutgers. Another 18 yards through the air, and Howard on the move. McGee starting to look like Nick Foles here with this little shotgun play action, frees the linebackers, and you know, it wasn't a spiral, but he, he found a little space behind the linebackers. At the 42 first down. McGee airing it down the sideline for Hartman, but that's incomplete. And a second down play coming up. Clock stops with a minute 32 remaining in this first half. We're seeing a lot of shotgun here. And, you know, you, you want to get back into the game, but you also don't want to make it hard on your offensive line and just let them let the rushers tee off on you. So that's why we're seeing the shotgun runs, the seeing the play action. Go ahead and run the draws, let them create running room for the running back. He eight for 16 in this first half for 100 yards, second and 10 at the 42 yard line. McGee on a quarterback draw, and McGee hops down to the 39, three yards on the play. Kevin Snyder, the middle linebacker there for the stop. Third down and six for Howard. But again, this will cost Howard five more. Full start. Offense number 72. Five-yard penalty remains third down. Just when you think Howard's going to get a little bit of momentum, we've seen movement, we've seen penalties that have cost him today. Yeah, a little mental lapse there by Malcolm Rutledge. And, you know, Rutgers looked like they were starting to bring some pressure. And sometimes as an offensive lineman, you see the butchers coming. You start to get a little antsy, and you start to kind of rock in your in your stance. Looked like that's what happened to Malcolm right there. But on a tough down to do it on third down, and, you know, right here at the end of the half, trying to come away with some points and get a little momentum going into halftime. They've got to take a timeout. The play clock was down to three when they broke huddle. 31-7 Rutgers, third and 11 for Howard when we return. Sure. Yes. Yeah, 31-7. Rutgers with the lead. 41 seconds remaining in the first half. Don't forget our Buffalo Wild Wings halftime report is straight ahead. Lots going on throughout the course of the day in the Big Ten Conference. Plenty of games to talk about right now and some surprising scores. Not going to give you any more information than that. That's called a broadcast teach. You got to <laughs> stick around. Nicely done. See what the crew has to sh show you coming up in our Buffalo Wild Wings halftime report. Tommy like winging. <laughs> Can we get any of those for, for the plug? <laughs> Third down and 11 at the 43. First game on the BTN, and you're already looking for food. I like that. I mean, I you are help. an offensive line. I want to help the sponsors out. Third down and 11. McGee, a little reverse handoff going to Parker, and the counter takes it down to the 40-yard line. Darius Hamilton on the tackle. Just a three-yard pickup, 30 seconds remaining until halftime, and maybe about all we see for this first half. Yeah, a sprint draw right there, pretty conservative play. I thought maybe they would try to take a little shot, you know, and, and maybe you run the clock down a little bit and, and go, you know, maybe it was two down scenario right there with fourth down. Looks like uh, Coach Harrell just wants to get into halftime and doesn't want any more damage. That's exactly what he will do. We have reached halftime here in Piscataway and Rutgers after falling behind 7-0. The Scarlet Knights have poured 31 unanswered onto the scoreboard and have a 31-7 lead at the break. Impressive performance in the first half for Rutgers, up big at half. It was January.
Rutgers on the field to start off this second half with a 31 to 7 lead over Howard and some of those highlights were as impressive as they looked in the first half possessions after the punt a three and out to start the game scores on the next four possessions the fumble and then the touchdown to close out their first half possessions impressive indeed for Rutgers falling behind seven nothing 31 unanswered points for Rutgers and quarterback Gary Nova finished eight for eight for 219 yards in his final eight passes and speaking of Gary Nova our Quicken Loans quarterback comparison you see the total numbers on the day for Nova 11 of 14 eight for his last eight Greg McGee eight of 17 for 100 yards but Gary Nova has done little wrong today Sean O'Hara he's been very sharp but uh, to be 11 for 14 I, I mean that says a lot of things but I, I think for Gary you know he's just looked the part and, and we talked about his demeanor and his confidence he just seems so comfortable out there he seems like he has such a sense of purpose and, and I think it's showing up obviously in, in the stats there and when you can throw for 251 yards in one half I think that, uh, that that adds to that confidence that we're already seeing from him Greg McGee getting some last minute instructions on the Howard sideline Tina Servacio is down on the sideline. Tina, you caught up with Coach Flood? Yes, I did, Kevin. And I asked him, with this 31-7 lead, what do you still want to see in the second half? He said, you know what? We could play a little bit better. He wants to see cleaner football. He said in the first half, they're doing a lot of what Akron did to Howard last week, coming up with a lot of those big plays. You got one big run play, three big pass plays. He says, but we could play better as a team, be more consistent defensively, and that's what he wants to see, clean up and get better as a football team this second half, Kevin. 396 yards Howard allowed through the air to Akron last week, and Kyle Flood taking a page out of Terry Bowden, the head coach of Akron's playbook going to the air a little bit more frequently today and with great effectiveness as well. Kyle Federico will kick it off. One area I'm sure Kyle Flood meant when he talked about cleaner football is kickoffs. Two have been out of bounds today. Yeah, can we just get it down the field? Federico does that. Robert Mercer over the shoulder catch at the two. Mercer breaking a tackle at the 20. Mercer down across the 25-yard line where Howard will start first and 10. Jacobs on the tackle for Rutgers. First half possessions for the Bison. That touchdown to start things off after an excellent punt return. Then look what the Rutgers defense was able to do. Eight yards, five yards, six yards, negative 10 yards. The block field goal and then the end of half. Yeah, three three and outs right there. Big statements and then the turnover. You know, Rutgers really kind of poured it on. But, you know, when you talk about the offense of Howard and you can run a scout team during the week and you say, hey, here's what they're going to do. Here's what the cards say we should make it look like. But it always looks different on game day. And that's what you can see what McGee is bringing to the table here with his play action fakes, with his mobility. It's tough to replicate that in, during the week sometimes. First down and 10 at the 26-yard line. Motion for Stuart Hartman on first down. McGee with pressure coming. He's in trouble. Breaks the tackle. midfield into Rutgers territory. Stevenson finally chasing him out at the 49. Quinton Gauze had him dead to right shot in the backfield for the sack and somehow McGee got away and ran for 25 yards. Yeah, Joe Rossi dials up a blitz here and, and you know you have the quarterback wrapped up but McGee shows his strength right there being able to fight through the tackle. Quick screen set up to Tavius Brown. No gain on the play. Second and 10 at the 49. You know, you bring the blitz off of that defensive right side because you're left-handed quarterback. And you want to keep him in the pocket, but when you have a defender in there, you have to finish that sack. And you have to, it's, that's, a, that's a huge play right there for the Rutgers defense that they couldn't come up with. Second down and 10 at the 49. McGee under pressure again, and he's dropped! The ball covered up on the fumble by his offensive lineman, but the sack coming in on a blitz. David Miluski untouched to the quarterback, and he blasts McGee. We talked earlier on about the troubles and left tackle, the injuries, and we see David Miluski taking advantage of the backup, backup left tackle being in for Howard. 
And for Maluski, what a great story. Mm. Not once, not twice, but three ACLs on the same knee, Kevin. The fact that he's even out there is a tribute to him, his work ethic, and his his mindset. He's, he's an inspiration to this entire team. Working on his Masters, and there's still a chance he could get a sixth year. Yes. And come back and apply finish his Masters. McGee tripped up as he gets back near midfield. And it'll leave a long way to go for the first down. Our Marine, United States Marine Corps leader of the game is David Maluski, and an excellent example of leadership. The captain, Sean mentioned the ACLs, the GPA last semester, 3.9 when you graduate, and now that's like working on that Masters. Okay. Yeah, that's, I'll let you do that, man. No surprise, he's a captain as well. Impressive, our United States Marine Corps leader of the game, David Maluski. His sack derailed the Howard, and now a block. The second block today for Rutgers. They had a field goal block, and now a punt block, and it was Nadir Barnwell who got in there and blocked the punt from John Fleck. They've been coming strong all day towards that punt, and finally Rutgers got there. Yeah, Howard is using that spread shield punt, and Rutgers the last two times have really come after him. They're bringing the gunners, they're bringing everybody. They brought 10 that time, and they were able to make it another big play. Nadir Barnwell and special teams for Rutgers. We showed you earlier, nobody blocks more kicks than the Scarlet Knights. A field goal and now a punt to their tally today. Before every home football game, the team travels down the Scarlet Walk and touches this statue, which commemorates the first intercollegiate football game. That first game was back in 1869. Rutgers beat Princeton 6-4. Place of college football. A little higher scoring than that first game, 31-7 <laughs> here in the third quarter with 8.58 remaining in the third. And a newspaper account of that game said to describe the varying fortunes of the match game by game would be a waste of labor for everyone was like the one before. <laughs> well said. It's hopeful that the scribes who are covering today's game will not just say, see last week's columns and articles. <laughs> because it was exactly the same. Third down and four from the 47 for Howard and quarterback Greg McGee. McGee trying to get to the corner. McGee has the corner and a first down. Darius Hamilton was out on the edge and got blocked just at the last minute to give McGee the edge he needed to get the first. Yeah, it looked like Darius was going to be able to make the play, but McGee shows his speed and you know, when you just mentioned and show Joe Rossi and you're talking about containing this quarterback, you cannot let him get to the edge. From the 41st down, looking deep down the sideline for Hartman, and the pass is incomplete. Hartman was out of bounds and came back in. The hat was off the field, Judge. Yeah. Thrown on that sideline, second down and 10. Regardless, just, you know, look, the ball is seems to be fluttering out of McGee's hand at times. That's probably the third duck that I'll, I'll call it that we've seen. You know, and it's weird. I, I feel like most of them have come from him throwing to the right. So maybe it's just a little mechanic issue with him. Second down and 10 at the 40. Play action. McGee again to the air. Dropped. Stuart Hartman at the 34-yard line with a chance to have a good game, but he couldn't pull it in. You can see the frustration again on the face of Greg McGee. Yeah, well, I mean, he's frustrated. You know, he misses a pass earlier on, and then another drop here. And, and, he, and not only did they drop the ball, but they dropped McGee. He took another hit. So definitely getting frustrated. And, you know, for McGee, uh, you know, Ted, Ted White talked ad nauseum about leadership and how much he's put on his plate and how well he's handling it. But in games like this, and it's tough to not let the frustration seep out when you're missing plays and letting things slip through your fingers. Play clock down the one as McGee gets the snap. A flag is down as he airs it out. Mercer is open and has it at the 20-yard line. If it stands, it's a 20-yard gain on third and 10, but a flag down back at the 42. Formation. Offense number 54. 
Moore right up in the backfield. More than four in the backfield. That'll be a five-yard penalty. Repeat second, third down. And there's a freshman offensive lineman yeah. making a critical mistake. Well, it's just too far in the backfield. And, you know, you can see that your helmet has to break the hip of the offensive lineman next to you, the adjacent lineman. And, you know, I mean, usually they give you a warning before they throw the flag. You know, unfortunate penalty, but an unfortunate timing as well because that was a great completion for McGee. Third down and 15 at the 45. McGee steps away from pressure, going to have to run. And McGee stood up by Steve Longa as he gets to the 42-yard line. Just a three-yard gain, but then here comes a flag on the sidelines. The flag was very late. I think they're going to call Longa for throwing him down to the ground. Dead ball. Unnecessary roughness defense. That'll be a 15-yard penalty from the end of the run. Automatic. First down. And that's a penalty that will drive a head coach crazy. I, I mean, I don't see it, Kevin. No. I, I, you know, he wasn't out of bounds. It just looked like he was finishing the tackle. Um, a little tacky there. You can understand the frustration by Kyle Flood. Yeah, and a new set of downs. Hard to fault Steve Longa there as he's in the process of well, going to the ground and we've seen as he goes out of bounds. Break through those tackles earlier on in the game. He's a tough guy to bring down. From the 27 on first down. Looking for running room up the middle is William Parker. And Parker down to the 22 before Dewani Mera could make the stop. Second and five. Day. And you know, those, those guys and gals, the band are warm as well. Those do not look like the most comfortable uniforms on a 91 degree day. Well, number one, they're, they're wearing black. Yes. Black and red. So that's hot. But long sleeves, too. Glad I'm not carrying that tuba. <laughs> I am, too. We don't have enough room up here for you and a tuba. <laughs> Second and five with the 22. McGee. Tosses short. Branton down the sideline, and Branton popped. At the 12, Garif Glashen on the tackle. Casey Branton with a first down, just shy of the 11-yard line. That was a good, accurate throw from McGee, and you mentioned the pop. Boy, Garif Glashen came up and really delivered a blow right there. For Howard, this is so crucial. We saw them drop the touchdown pass earlier, then lose points on the blocked field goal. This is a big red zone possession right here. Balanced drive. You saw the play selection. Seven runs, five passes. First and 10, 11 yard line for Greg McGee and Howard. To the outside. Parker inside the five and into the end zone for the touchdown. William Parker scores for Howard. What a great run by Willie pa Parker. You know, we talked about the other running backs earlier on, but this was this was a great third addition to the running back crew. And, you know, there was a number of missed tackles. There was a trail of Scarlet Knight defenders on the way to the end zone in that run. Parker's a guy who got injured toward the end of last year. Rushed for 457 yards and a pair of touchdowns. Into the end zone here. They're missing Anthony Filia, who is ineligible pending NCAA and MEAC clearance. As a freshman last year, he rushed for 15 touchdowns. We'd love to see him get cleared, get back in the lineup. Tough hold, but a hold that is down or the kick is no good. There have been some problems today with the hold. Richard Iagoro unable to get this one down, but the touchdown puts six on the board for Howard. William Parker with a nose for the end zone makes it 31-13. I tell you, Kevin, I love the call. I just don't like the timing of the call. On fourth and 22, you're asking your punter to run 23 yards. And you can see here, I mean, they're coming after him. They're, they're, Rutgers has been coming after them. They're the punter all day. He gets to the edge, and, you know, look, if you make that call on fourth and seven, he gets the first down. But fourth and 22, that's a lot to ask your punter to do. 
here. I like the aggressiveness because you have to make something happen. But now look where they, where Rutgers gets the ball. You're really putting your defense in a bind. Trying to take advantage of Rutgers' aggressiveness on punt block today. Yes. But too much to get, especially after the penalty. First down and 10 at the 23 now. And Gary Nova and company are going to have to talk this one over. I'm out. Rutgers number 10. 126 remaining in the third. And Gary Nova will head over to the sidelines to talk with Kyle Flood and company. It is a can't miss triple header of Big Ten football next Saturday. First, Stephon Diggs and Maryland square off with West Virginia. Then, Devin Gardner and the Wolverines welcome Miami University to the Big House. And in prime time, rivals meet for the first time as Big Ten opponents when Christian Hackenberg leads Penn State against Paul James and Rutgers next Saturday on BTN and BTN to go. How about a little September conference primetime football here at Rutgers? Bring it on. It's going to be great. Burton the motion man on first down. Peoples. Inside the 20 to the 19, picks up four. Well, with conference play beginning next week, we remind you of the new division alignments in the Big Ten, the East and the West. Legends and leaders are gone. And in the East division, already a big battle next week between Penn State and Rutgers. Yeah, as uh, Coach Flood referred to as the team to our West, I, I know that, I mean, there's been so much buzz about that game. And Got a bunch of players that I know that played at Penn State. I can't wait to talk some players. Play action. Nova to the end zone. It is caught. It is a touchdown. John Simmons with his second touchdown of the year. And Rutgers adds to its lead. Great play action fake. You know, it's set up by the run game by Gary Nova with a great pass on the run. So the fake punt results in a short field, and Gary Nova pays it off in just two plays with a touchdown pass to John Simmons. For Nova, that's four touchdown passes today as Federico's extra point is good. And with 44 seconds to go in the third quarter, Gary Nova and Rutgers with a 38-13 lead, and Nova finding John Simmons for his second touchdown of the year. That's the play action of the, the, the run play that they just ran prior to that. Great pass. Great catch. Big play for Rutgers. As you said, cashing in on that fake punt. And Mike Teal sees Gary Nova in his rearview mirror. Yes, he does. I'm going to go out on a limb and say Gary Nova is going to become the all-time leader in career touchdown passes very, very soon. That's a pretty thick limb. I, 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 that's, those are the only limbs I'm walking okay. out on. Gary yeah, Nova, what a day he's had. And Mike Teal's actually the assistant coach for Rutgers. So it's, it's great. It's great to see him out there. Uh, stop by practice and he's helping out with the receivers. He's doing a good job. And, and you know what? Knowing Mike Teal, he's rooting him on. He's saying that records were meant to be broken. And I'll go with you on that limb. He will. Yeah. It better be a sturdy limb if we're both out there. It might happen today. <laughs> Ready to kick things off after the fourth touchdown pass of the day for Gary Nova. And will that be the final moment of the day for Gary Nova. Good question. Chris Laviano, who won the backup quarterback job with a very strong fall. The redshirt freshman may be taking his first career snaps coming up. Yeah, I, I think it's a great opportunity as your coach Kyle Flood, you know, depending on how this series goes, if you could get your backup quarterback in and get him some live reps, I think that would be huge for him. Rutgers, of course, opens up Big Ten play next weekend, but Rutgers, I don't know if this is, you know, the welcome mat that's been thrown out by the conference, but that is a that is a grueling conference schedule. Penn State, then in October you have Michigan, you get the break, but then you're at Ohio State, you're at Nebraska, you're home for Wisconsin, another break before Indiana, Michigan State, and Maryland those close out the year. Yeah, those three right there. That right in the middle, and, and at Ohio State, at Nebraska, which you know all too well, Two tough places to play. Well, whenever you go on the road like that, you have to start fast, but those are going to be grueling games back to back. And back to back to back with Wisconsin, games and teams that will be very physical, very deliberate, pounding you out a little bit. 
Here's Terrence Tucson. Tucson to the edge. Terrence Tucson with some fresh legs able to get out to the 42-yard line. He gets 17 yards before Nadir Barnwell can chase him out. He had 92 yards all of last year. He led the team in rushing last week against Akron. Looked good there. Yeah, and you mentioned the fresh legs. I mean, on a hot day, to have the luxury of being able to rotate three running backs, we're seeing it paying off right there as he gets to the edge so quickly. From the 42-yard line, McGee, quick slant. Good catch by Colvin. First down, flag down as Colvin is down inside the 40 at the 38-yard line of Rutgers. The flag, though, back near the 49-yard line of the Scarlet Knights. Modi, defense number 12. Now, penalties declined. Play results in first down. Big plays back to back for Howard. They're back in Rutgers territory. Yeah, and one just sets up the other. When you have a great, great big run like that, now everybody's keying on, hey, we have to tackle this running back. And McGee used that to his advantage with the play action. 20 yards on that play. Final play of the third quarter, and it's Tucson up the middle for a yard to the 37 yard line. The third quarter is in the books here in New Jersey. And the Rutgers Scarlet Knights with a 38-13 lead over the Howard Bison through three. You could win money for the future. So the skyline of New York City as we welcome you back to New Jersey. BTN presenting Rutgers and Howard. And the score by quarters, you see the third quarter, the closest one, Rutgers with 31 points in the first half, and the rain has begun to fall here in Piscataway. This will not last long to start, one wouldn't think, because we see a lot of blue sky from our position. Yeah, hopefully it blows over. Tina Servacio, I'm sure, could have told us that it was raining as well as she's out there on the field. Maybe it cools it off. Hopefully, second down and nine. McGee under pressure, got a block. McGee, nifty footwork, great spin, and McGee's got a first down. This kid is fun to watch. That's the second time today that you've kind of had to catch your breath yeah, with Greg McGee. Just a great feel for the rush. I mean, Kimoko, you saw it coming off the edge. He looked like he was going to get a sack and get a hit, and the next thing you know, McGee's gone, spinning out there. I mean, he's... He's playing like uh, like an Xbox, like he's got an Xbox controller in his hand. McGee again on the move. Got away. McGee going to run. And McGee out of bounds, close to another Howard first down. Chased out by Kevin Snyder at the 19-yard line. He gets eight on that scramble. Wow. He's doing it all himself. We talked about key to the game for Rutgers was their secondary. We, we should have talked about their run defense because they've <laughs> been giving up a lot of big runs. They gave up four runs of 10 yards more in just the third quarter alone. Second and two to the air. The first down, Colvin. And Colvin sandwiched at the 13-yard line. Hopefully Colvin's okay. He is helped up by his teammates. He got hit hard. He got hit hard three times. I think it was the last one there. Really rocked him. Uh, you see the big D lineman right there coming out. Oh, he kind of gets his own guy, too. First down and 10 at the 12-yard line. William Parker is the lone setback. First down and 10 at the 12. Parker with the carry. Parker inside the 10, fights his way down to the 8-yard line. Four yards before Steve Longa comes up on the stop. One more look at that big hit by Rutgers on Colvin. You see the big D tackle coming down there, and Barnwell kind of gets a shot, too. He just gets smashed in between both of those guys. Looks like Kenneth Kirksey coming down. Good hustle. Call that friendly fire if you hit your own guy. Second down and five with Tavius Brown motioning. In trouble and McGee is sacked. The pocket collapsing. Julian Pinnix Odrick with the sack.
Well, I was just getting ready to say Willie Parker looked like he did a good job recognizing the blitz coming over and picking up the linebacker. But it's the left tackle. And, you know, we, we keep talking about that. This is their third left tackle, and they're just taking advantage of it. Third down and 11. McGee on the design run. McGee to the five. McGee diving for the goal line, and he's in for the touchdown. Greg McGee just making things happen for Howard. Wow, McGee, almost a wildcat-like play here. And I tell you, he, he is dynamic. Makes that look easy, Kevin. Right up the middle of the defense. Got a couple of great blocks downfield, but he's keeping Howard in this ballgame. Fleck on for the extra point. They hold his bobble. Ayagoro trying to do something with it. He could not. And one thing Howard has struggled with all day, holds the kick game, special teams. It's plagued the Bison. That's the second missed extra point of the day. Greg McGee, though, with the rushing touchdown. Some nifty moves to get across for six. Due to time constraints, we now move ahead in the action. 6-17 remaining, fourth quarter. Rutgers closing in on a 2-0 start to the season. Howard with the football, first and 10 at their own 23-yard line. Greg McGee with Terrence Tucson, the tailback in the eye, on first down and 10 at the 23-yard line. Tavius Brown motioning in the slot. Draw play, Tucson. Pop into the outside, and Tucson with those fresh legs out near the 30-yard line, close to a seven-yard pickup for Terrence Tucson. And it'll be second down. Howard's coaches, Gary Harrell and company, are going to feel like some strides were made. They didn't feel very good about that Akron game a week ago. No, Coach Harrell talked about how you know, they had a lot of inexperienced guys and, and they had a bunch of guys go down, so they had players stepping in for the first time. He thought they were a little bit nervous and, and he thought that they, uh, you know, they got a little shell shocked by the stage. They certainly didn't look like that today at all. Nice cut by Tucson into the clear. Terrence Tucson, can he make it all the way? He can, 71 yards for Terrence Tucson and Howard put six more on they just will not go away. They're not going to let Rutgers just sail off on this one. What a great run by Tucson. You know, we took Coach Harrell talked about how he loved the explosion and he really liked Tucson's big playability. He shows it right there. And I tell you, there was nobody in the middle of the field for Rutgers. They are going to go for two, Sean. Well, why not after all the troubles they've had with the holds and the snaps? It makes sense. It has been a struggle at times for the extra point. They've missed two of them today. So they'll try to get at least one of those points back here on the two-point conversion. The play clock, however, is down to seven. They're going to have to hurry. Play clock is down to four. Play clock at one, and they cannot. They take the timeout. So they have to take the timeout on the conversion try. That's going brutal. for two. Five you know, twenty-two to go in the fourth, and a timeout burned by Howard. They have one left. Yeah, let's uh, let's look at this run. I mean, great cut right here, and there's just nobody there. Now, listen, Terrence Suzon, this is a big run. This guy is 5'6", 150 pounds. I mean, he's a little guy, but boy, he's got some wheels. I like the little exclamation point at the end. Officially a 70-yard run for Terrence Tucson. The longest run by Howard this season. And for Tucson, who had 92 yards all of last year, he's had a career day today. Four carries, 95 yards of the touchdown for the junior from Dallas. That's a great average. That's not bad. That's pretty good. Carry the one, 20-something. <laughs> um, great, I mean, a, a great little scat back. And if you're Joe Rossi, the defensive coordinator, you got to be fired up over there to see your defense go out and give up a big run like that. 
He had 60 yards on 18 carries last week. That was his career best. The two-point conversion and Parker straining for the goal line will not get there. The two-point conversion is no good. 38-25. Rutgers with a 13-point lead at home. Football with BTN is brought to you by State Farm. It pays to double check. Talk to your agent today. And by John Deere Gator Utility Vehicles. Own a special edition Midnight Black Gator. Visit your dealer today before their shadow of New York City. Rutgers in its first home game as a member of the Big Ten Conference. 5.22 to go in the fourth and a 38-25 lead. Rutgers and Howard in the final stages of this one here in Piscataway. It's a great skyline. That Manhattan skyline and you know Rutgers it's the state of New Jersey yes but New York has has really kind of embraced Rutgers as well and you know I, I think this whole area they're embracing the fact that Rutgers in the Big Ten as well now Gary Harrell and Howard certainly not intimidated by Rutgers being in the Big Ten outscoring the Scarlet Knights oh. 18 to 7 in the second half looks like we got an onside kick brewing here John Fleck Looking for the onside. Still raining out there. Can he get the hop that he wants? Touched prior to the 10 yards and then out of bounds. And here come the flags. This will be Rutgers football. Illegal procedure. Kick out of bounds by the kicking team. It'll be a five-yard penalty from the spot where it went out of bounds. First down. And it'll be Rutgers football. Paul James, our Duluth trading, hardest working player today. He did it not as a running back, but as a receiving back. Great point, Kevin. I mean, coming into this game, if you would have told me you won that, I would have said, sure, it's probably 30 carries and over 100 yards rushing. But he did it through the air. And he proved that, yes, he has great hands, but if you get him in space, he's even more dangerous than in between the tackles. Paul James. Working hard these last two weeks. Over 200 yards rushing on the year, over 100 yards receiving today. You know, he was the recipient of the very first Big Ten helmet sticker for Rutgers player. He might get another one this week. On first down, Hicks up the middle, Barry. Huge push up front by Gresham Chisholm. Damon Gresham Chisholm, the junior from Covington, Georgia, who was the MEAC Rookie of the Year two years ago. Great penetration. We've seen so much of that penetration today, Kevin. It's it's really remarkable. He just beat the tight end inside. And I think that's something that is going to drive Kyle Flood nuts when they go back and look at this tape. Second and 12 at the 40-yard line. Hicks again. Hicks to the outside. And Hicks with a flag down out of bounds. The flag back near the 40-yard line. Holding, offense number 77. 10-yard penalty, remain second down. That's J.J. Denman. And you mentioned this is the time where these guys who haven't seen a lot of opportunities in their career are getting some playing time and some valuable reps. Yeah, the experience is huge. And, you know, to have these players be able to get in here and, you know, games are so different than practice. And, and you want to know how do they adjust on the run. If you go out and do, have a series and you come back, can you change, can you correct mistakes in the game? That's what they're learning, and the speed of the game is definitely faster than practice. J.J. Denman, he's actually got some reps last week. He got about 15 snaps, unfortunately gave up a sack, and then today, unfortunately, has a penalty. Second and 22 now after the penalty at midfield. Laviano with time. Catch made by Grant. Grant trying to fight for extra yardage. He is stacked up at the 44-yard line, six-yard pickup. Devin Rollins on the stop and we've seen some miscues by Howard today and these mistakes as it turns out have proven very costly. Yeah the turnover absolutely but that drop touchdown right there was huge because then this happened right after it. A huge swing and another block kick. You know for Howard they, they needed to play a near perfect game to really win this today and, and I know Coach Harrell he's, he's definitely happier with the way they started the game than last week against Akron but they're going to be kicking themselves when they see some of the plays that they could have had. 
Toss play on third and 16. Martin trying to find the corner, and he's not going to be able to get there. Howard swarming to the football. Cameron Alston on the tackle. Don't forget coming up, brought to you by John Deere Gator, our Northern Illinois Northwestern game coming up next. Also, Middle Tennessee State and Minnesota, presented by John Deere Gator Utility Vehicle on BTN and BTN to go. Those are our 3.30 Eastern games today on BTN. Winding down this one, the final three minutes and counting here at Rutgers. Trying to hang that one inside the 10, backing up as Brown takes a Rutgers bounce to stay in play, and then a little bit of a Howard bounce to get extra yardage to the nine-yard line. David Maluski downing that punt, and next week, the lights turn on here in Rutgers because Rutgers and Penn State kick off the conference season. Pre-game coverage begins at 7 o'clock Eastern. Next Saturday at 8 o'clock Eastern, Penn State and Rutgers. Conference play under the lights in September on BTN between two conference rivals. Pre-game again at 7 Eastern. We'll kick shortly after 8. Cannot wait to be here for that one. That's going to be awesome, Kevin. Penn State's beating Akron, who beat Howard last week. 21-3 the score in that game as we stand. And a little delayed handoff for Terrence Tucson, trying to strike again with the play on the ground, and a pickup of three for Tucson, and Howard hurrying it up with two and a half to play. Uh, the defense not even set there. The ball is snapped. And McGee just going to have to get rid of that one. There's a flag down. Now, McGee was in between the tackles as well. I think that's an offensive lineman downfield. Looks like number 72. So now officials conferring. It was an ineligible downfield. But now I think they're discussing whether or not he was in the tackle box and it would be intentional grounding. Which would be loss of down. Well, don't forget next week, Penn State and Rutgers. Dave, Jerry, and Howard will be here doing everything from here, and there's the flag. We have two fouls on the offense. Ineligible downfield on the offense. That penalty is declined. We have an intentional grounding, number 14. That penalty will go to the two-yard line. Loss of down, third down. Well, I mentioned Dave, Jerry, and Howard. Our studio show will be here set up to on tomorrow not tomorrow i don't think they have to be here quite yet dave <laughs> don't go to the airport that'd be cool that'd be a, that'd be a long show next week yeah, be a long week of sitting in the stadium uh it would be next week yeah they will all be here Saturday if you're in the nights. rutgers area come on down see the guys maybe maybe jerry will let you hold the belt come down the to championship room. belt yeah i'm sure it's with him it never actually leaves his side well that's going to be a great lead up to the game and, and the game itself you know i mean rutgers coming off of 532 passengers last week. And then now Christian Hackenberg coming in after his big game last week. Tucson on third and 17 from the two, stacked up just shy of the five-yard line as we wind our way towards two minutes to play in the fourth. And, you know, Kevin, it's interesting. We we heard from Marco Battaglia down on the sideline before. Marco was a, a senior when I came here as a, a freshman. And I remember playing Penn State. It was a home game for Rutgers, but there was only 42,000 seating here in this stadium. So we played it at Meadowlands, then Giant Stadium. And Bobby Ingram scooped up a fumble and ran it in for a touchdown, and Penn State went on to win that game. But I remember just being in awe of being on the same field at Penn State. That was 1995. Fleck with the punt. Fair catch signaled and made at the 49 of Howard. Rutgers head coach Kyle Flood had the chance to sit down and talk to us about the game with Penn State. The opportunity to have our neighbors to the west come to Piscataway for the really the, the first Big Ten game we'll play is a, a tremendous opportunity for us. It's certainly two local fan bases, but for Rutgers, it's our chance to make a first impression. And I've told our team this, I've told the coaching staff this, first impressions in life count and we've got a chance to do it on a national stage. I don't think we could have a better opportunity. Our neighbors to the West. Yeah, he didn't want to say it. But will, I, will he say it at any point this week? Oh, I'm sure. I'm sure. You know their mantra is chop. 
so they they'll attach right. chop, chop Penn, Penn State. State chop our neighbors to the west but it's interesting he said the first impression well you know for Rutgers they want to make a good first impression they need to start fast next week not like they did this week because as I mentioned with Christian Hackenberg if you start slow and you give him a chance and then with uh, freshman Rayshon Hamilton um, or Deshaun Hamilton if that's how you pronounce his name you know he was the co-freshman player of the week last week so now you've got a great one-two punch there with the quarterback and the receiver. And Penn State's going to be a much more physical team than this Howard team was today. Penn State's defense doing the job today against Akron, an offense that put 41 on the board against Howard a week ago. Penn State getting it done, at least at last check, 21-3 over Akron. Yeah. Of course, Dave and the crew will keep you up to date throughout the afternoon on all of the scores and all of the activity in the Big Ten throughout the rest of the day. And then next week, we're right back here, 7 o'clock p.m. Eastern time with the pregame show and Gary Nova and company with a big step up in competition next week when Penn State comes calling in the first conference game of the year. Yeah, Kevin, uh, Nova is Spanish for no-go, but he certainly did go today, and he, did a, he had a big day in the passing game. And, you know, really back-to-back -back solid performances by Gary Nova and we talked about his demeanor I mean as good as he's looked on the field I just like the leadership that he's showing this team um, that being the captain of the offense and you know he's just he's done a great job of handling everything final score in this one Rutgers hangs on to win at 38 25 the Scarlet Knights are 2 and 0 to start off the 2014 season now let's give you a little extra bonus coverage as we head to Champaign Illinois and join Chris Denari on the call Illinois and Western Kentucky at Farmers, we make you smarter about your insurance because what you don't know can hurt you. What if you didn't know that taking pictures of your belongings helps when you have a claim? Or that Farmers offers a policy that will replace your car with a new one if it's total within the first two model years. And that parking near a street lamp deters thieves. The more you know, the better you can plan for what's ahead. Talk to Farmers and get smarter about your insurance. We are Farmers. Bum, ba -dum, bum, 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 bum. Call 1-800-FARMERS and see how much you could save. Ever dream of never-ending pizza? CeCe's has endless pizza for just $5.55 all September long. Looks like dreams do come true. CeCe's endless pizza buffet is $5.55 all day, every day in September. That's right. We're talking never-ending pizza, salad, pasta, and dessert for just $5.55. CeCe's endless pizza, endless bag.